Ladies and gentlemen, next year will mark the 75th anniversary of my family and myself arriving in the welcoming arms of the Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor and the USA. It only took three years before I was able to show my gratitude and my patriotism by, by joining the long crowd of volunteers at the Army recruiting station. I was turned down right away because I was an enemy alien, but the local board soon caught up with me and I was on my way. I arrived at the station where we were supposed to meet for transfer to the camp. And my talents were immediately recognized when the sergeant in charge put me on KP before I was even sworn in. <laughs> I survived basic training and kept volunteering for everything that came along, including the Rangers, where I became a sergeant, and while on maneuvers in Arizona, my group captured the blue general staff, and including their general, who called me in the next day and told me I was wasting my time here would I be interested in joining OSS? <laughs> well, I had no idea what that was all about, but he explained it, and I was ready to go. And next day, I was on my way to Washington and the Congressional Country Club, where I was detailed to an operational group of German-speaking soldiers. We were trained in parachuting, underwater demolition, hand-to-hand -hand combat, and you name it. And we finally headed for North Africa, but no action. We headed to Italy, still no action. So five of us decided we go to Allied headquarters and speak to the commanding officer of OSS, the Lieutenant Colonel Howard Chapin, who immediately accepted our offer. We were sent to Bari for further training, and Lieutenant Lowenstein was one of the best instructors we had, who primed me in the German order of battle. All the rest I could have figured out by myself. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we finally got my, our assignment, even though I was born in a black forest where I said I know my way around, so I decided, well, so I needed somebody to explain why trains were headed down to Italy when the bridges were out, I was able to find out that the Germans had built portable bridges which I pulled into the tunnels. And at the same time, I found out that 26 trains were headed for Italy with resupply for the German army in northern Italy. It was, I, I cabled that in, and all trains were destroyed, destroyed by our Air Force the next day. Having done that, I figured anything else that would come along would be child's play. <laughs> and somebody gave me away in between, and the Gestapo caught up with me and mishandled me a bit. <laughs> but uh, the doctor who was present and saw 
that I was faking being with, with, without self-control at that time. And he said, well, the man is practically dead, let him go. And he's the one who was a good friend of the governor and decided he was going to introduce me to him. Well, I was able to convince him that I would treat him as a PW, he and his staff, if he would surrender Innsbruck without any defense. Of course, you can imagine how much right I had to do that being a sergeant. <laughs> anyway, he accepted the, the details and went on the radio to, tell, to make Innsbruck an open city. And I drove through the lines to contact the G2 of the 103rd Division and brought him back with me to Hofus, that was his name, headquarters, and I signed his surrender. Having all that, General Donovan decided to recommend me for the Congressional Medal, which obviously I didn't get. But uh, <laughs> the honor of being even mentioned for that was the first great honor I had until tonight, getting this honor from the OSS Society. And I want to thank all the people who kept my name alive in writing, Patrick O'Donnell, the last one, who made me one of the inglorious bastards. <laughs> and Ed, Ed Barwelt for making the movie about it. I can only thank everybody for coming here and honoring me as you have done. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks. Thank you.